Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with queso dip. That's right, I'm going to show you how to make a cheese dip that's better looking, better for you, and way, way better tasting than anything you're going to get at the store. And of course, whether that amount of extra effort is going to be worth it is going to be up to you. And will depend on factors like how much you plan on drinking. But if you do decide to make your queso dip from scratch, you'll want to use this very easy and virtually foolproof technique. And to get started, what we'll do is grate about a half pound of cheese. And I usually don't film this, but it's come to my attention that some of you are still using pre-grated cheese, which I think is a terrible idea since it's usually of lesser quality and coated with cellulose dust. So do me and your guests a favor and take the extra minute or less it takes to grate this yourself. Oh, and in case you're wondering, I'm using a nice sharp white cheddar here, but any melty cheese will work. And sometimes I'll go with half Monterey Jack and half cheddar since that's how they did it in the Mexican restaurant I worked at in college. So feel free to use whatever you want. I mean, you are after all the Jesus of your quesos. Which, by the way, is a much better rhyme in English. But anyway, no matter what cheese we use, once it's grated, we're going to toss it with one tablespoon of cornstarch. All right, just sprinkle it over and take a spoon and give it a toss. And then as soon as our cheese has been successfully starched, we will set that aside, and we can move on to preparing the base of our dip. And for that, we're going to melt about a tablespoon of butter over medium-high heat, to which we will add some finely minced or crushed garlic, as well as some sliced green onions. And I'm just using the white and lighter parts here, but we will save some of the dark green parts to garnish the top layer if we want. And then to our garlic and onions, we will also add a nice big pinch of salt, as well as a little bit of ground chipotle, which as you probably know is a smoked jalapeno. And we'll finish up with a little bit of cumin, and then what we'll do is cook this stirring on medium high for just two minutes. Okay, we're not trying to brown or caramelize anything here. All we're doing is taking off the raw edge. So like I said, we will only give that a couple minutes before adding the next two ingredients, which would be a half cup of canned fire roasted chilies. And I'm actually using hatch chilies here, but any of your popular fire roasted canned peppers will work. As would, of course, freshly fire roasted chilies. Oh yeah, you get extra credit for that. And then we'll also toss in some diced, seeded tomatoes. And we'll go ahead and give that a stir and cook this for like two minutes. And by the way, as you might know, I'm not a huge fan of using fresh tomatoes in the middle of winter. But I'm happy to report this is one of the few recipes where terrible supermarket tomatoes actually work pretty well. So this time at least we can include those without any shame. And then what we'll do after we've cooked our tomatoes and peppers for a couple minutes is add one can of evaporated milk which depending on the brand you use will come in lots of different colors, none of which will be white. All right, they can range from a pale yellow to a light brown, but don't be concerned. Okay, that color happens because of the way the milk is condensed, which reminds me, please do not accidentally use sweetened condensed milk. That will not be good. And what we'll do after stirring that in is wait for it to come up to a boil, because once it does, what we'll do is give it a stir and then carefully and confidently add our cheese. And we will stir that in. And the combination of our melting cheese plus that cornstarch swelling up in this hot liquid is going to thicken this mixture up. And then, very important, as soon as our cheese is melted, we want to immediately turn off the heat. All right, we never want to boil a cheese sauce because it will get all grainy and separated and not have a good texture. So as soon as that cheese melts, turn off your heat. And then we'll finish this up by stirring in a nice handful of chopped cilantro, if you're going to use it. Okay, if you don't like it, don't put it. It's not going to bother me at all. But I do like it, so I'm going to stir some in. And that's it. At this point, our queso dip is pretty much done. Except, of course, we have to taste it for seasoning, which we are not going to do off a spoon or our finger. All right, we need to use a chip, which have salt on them. And by tasting this on a chip, we will get a much more accurate gauge for whether we have to adjust the seasoning. And I decided mine needed a little more salt and a little more heat. So I gave it a few shakes of cayenne and gave it one final stir. And that's it. Once that's tasting exactly how we want, we'll go ahead and serve it up. Next to probably a whole bunch of corn chips. And I hope you like how those look, because those took me about 30 minutes to arrange. But anyway, we will serve that up and maybe top it with some more diced tomato. And possibly a little scattering of green onion. Plus one last gratuitous shake of cayenne. And that's it. Our queso is now ready for our feso. So let me go ahead and dip in. And that, my friends, as you can imagine, was absolutely delicious. And as I mentioned earlier, sure, this takes a little more work. 
but the taste and texture of this is so far superior than anything out of a jar. It is not even close to the same experience. Oh, and speaking of texture, as this stuff cools down, it will thicken up, but only to a certain point. All right, one of the things I love about this recipe is even when it's fully cooled, it still retains a beautiful, creamy, smooth texture. And above and beyond avoiding like a dozen ingredients we can't spell or pronounce, the beauty of making this from scratch is that you can easily tailor this to your own personal taste. Okay, we already said you could add different cheeses, but you could also add things like pickled vegetables or maybe some roasted corn, or yes, even a handful of nice crispy bacon. But anyway, that's it. How I like to make queso cheese dip, which if you don't speak Spanish, translates to cheese cheese dip. But anyway, whether you're gonna serve this for the big game or just any old time you're craving a delicious cheesy snack, I really do hope you give this a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.